All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to my garage. We're here, it's summertime, and we're getting into smallmouth bass season. It's my favorite time of the year. You know, I've pretty much fed my family on catching smallmouth over the last 10 years or so. So they have a very special place in my heart. And uh, for one, they're just, to me, they're the most fun fish to catch. They're crazy. They are aggressive. They fight hard. Um, they're just they're mean. They're bass on steroids, and you can catch them in a lot of lakes around the entire country. Of course, everyone knows how good those northern lakes are. Michigan, Minnesota, Wisconsin, New York. Um, but we've got some good smallmouth fishing out here out west, and, and there's good smallmouth fishing scattered all around the country. And today, I'm going to talk about four baits and techniques that you need in your smallmouth arsenal wherever you're going. It doesn't matter if you're, you're fishing down here in the southwest, the northeast, anywhere in between. If there's smallmouth in your body of water, these techniques, you'll catch them. And, you know, one big thing about smallmouth fishing that is pretty cool to me is you really don't have to worry about having 30 different rods in the boat, having 30 different baits. You know, I can go out with a handful of rods and a handful of baits and feel really confident that I'm going to be able to catch those fish pretty much anywhere in the country, at least have, you know, one or two good techniques out of the handful for that body of water. So um, these are four must-have techniques and baits to go smallmouth fishing. And uh, we're going to start it off with a reaction bait. You know, whenever you're getting onto a body of water and you got to find a fish, you got to have a technique, a bait that you can make a lot of cast with, cover a lot of water, and find those aggressive fish to tell you where they live. And, you know, that's a jerk bait. I think a jerk bait is going to make a lot of people's list as far as top smallmouth baits. This is a Berkeley Stunna 112. Now, they make it a 112 and a 112 plus. The 112 plus is going to go a little bit deeper. This is the standard 112, and I'm going to use this a lot for the smallmouth. You know, they are, again, they're going to be in clear water. This time of year when it's warm, they're aggressive. They're not afraid to come up and eat something. So I like the regular 112 more often than not on these uh, smallmouth fisheries. And you can see right here, really, really bright color. Um, it's got a chartreuse belly. I like a lot of different stunna colors um, for these smallmouth, but typically I'm going to be throwing something that's bright. Smallmouth, there's something about chartreuse that really triggers these fish. I always go back and to the point where I'm not I'm not a biologist. I don't know exactly what it is, but they like bright stuff. They can see it from a long ways away, and more often than not, they're aggressive enough to eat it. So, um, phenomenal bait for covering water, finding those fish. Windy day, cloudy day, it doesn't matter. You know, smallmouth are such sight feeders that you need a bait that they can see from a long ways away. You're going to flat out catch more fish with a bait that they can see from 10 or 15 feet away than one that's going to be more translucent and harder to see under most conditions. So Berkeley, stun a jerk bait. Um, you cannot fish this thing too fast for the smallmouth in the summertime. You can, you want to cast this thing out and rip it and jerk it almost as hard and as fast as you can. Very aggressively. Snap, snap, pause. Snap, snap, pause. Real fast, uh, real aggressive, and trigger those fish that way. Um, absolutely super fun way to catch fish. I, I caught a bunch of fish. We had a tournament last summer at Champlain, and I was fishing these big, expansive flats. Uh, sometimes it was rock, sometimes it was grass, but these big giant flats where the fish could literally be anywhere. And I was covering so much water, throwing that jerk bait, fishing it real fast, and uh, the fish were absolutely crushing it. They were they were eating the paint off of it. So um, jerk bait number one. Um, one other hard bait with treble hooks that is becoming more and more popular in, in the bass fishing world over the last 10 years is a spy bait. Um, I got a couple of them right here. This is the Berkeley Spy. Got a nice shad color right there and a perch color right here. And when you are out on the water on a day when they don't want to eat the jerk bait, they're still somewhat shallow. They're maybe up in the water column, but they're tricky. They are, maybe it's glass calm. It's a post frontal day. They're not their normal aggressive self. The spy bait's an amazing way to catch them. I've got so many examples of situations where I knew where the fish were at. I knew I was around smallmouth, but I just couldn't make them bite. And I dig down into the rod locker, pull out a spy bait, and, and catch them. And a lot of times, big ones. It's hard to believe a little bait like that, tiny little, this is what we call a spy 70. It's a 70 millimeter bait. It's tiny. It catches really big fish. I mean, I would consider it, I would call it a big fish bait. 
hard to believe for a bait this little, but um, and the way this thing works is you're gonna cast it out, spinning rod, light line, cast it out. It casts a lot better than you'd think too. It casts like a little bullet, long cast, and then you're just gonna reel it straight through the water column. And as you reel it, it has a really natural, pretty little listing action through the water. And it's just a, a tasty little nugget to those fish. Um, uh, depending on what the forage is that the fish are eating, I'm gonna go with more natural colors on this. We were talking about the bright colors on the jerk bait because you're aggressively fishing it through the water column. This thing right here is so much more natural. The fish are gonna slowly swim up to it and get a better look. So you want to have your bait look like what the fish are eating. If they're eating sh uh, smelt, shiners, minnows, shad, whatever, you know, a nice pretty little shad color works when they're eating perch. Something like that. We got a beautiful ghost perch here from uh, Berkeley with that spy. And uh, again, really important light line, um, soft rod. I like it like a seven two medium light spinning rod. That medium light really helps the smaller the smaller hooks when the fish bite it. Um, the little baby treble hooks on there. If you got a stiff rod, it's going to pull those hooks out. So soft rod, cast it out slowly reel it. If you fish this thing too fast, it loses its listing action. You want to reel it really slow to allow it to list like that. And um, again, you got to know where the fish are at, right? Because you're fishing it slow. It's, it's not a good bait to cover water with, but when you know where they're at, but they're hard to catch, which happens sometimes, spy bait is a great bait. You got to have a couple on the boat for days like that. It's, it's very rare that I go out on the water and say, I'm going out today to throw a spy bait. But when you're out on the water and the fish are being finicky, you know where they're at, it's a tough day, then you go to the spy bait. You pull it out in the middle of the day and it's saved a lot of days for me with either just maybe one or two key catches or even throwing it an entire morning or afternoon and catching them all day on it. So phenomenal bait. You need clear water to throw it just because it doesn't have this crazy profile to it, but I love throwing it. I love catching them. If you're not throwing it, make sure you uh, pick some up and give it a shot. And then going to the soft plastic side of things, um, a Ned Rig. Ned Rig would be my third bait, and I'm not going in order of importance here, but it's the third out of the four baits. I'm going to talk about it with a Berkeley Lil General. Any short stubby bait is going to work really well on a Ned Rig for these smallmouth, but there's something magical about scent on smallies. It started with Gulp, and now with Max Scent, I could, I have so much more confidence throwing a max scent bait around these smallies, whatever, for whatever reason, they just like it more. They'll come and get it and they'll hold on to it longer. And I can speak from experience. That's the truth. Um, the little general is just a two and three quarter inch little stick bait. They love that short stubby little profile of a Ned worm. I mean, it doesn't look like much to us, but smallmouth just love that short little stubby profile. Cast it out on some type of little Ned mushroom head, um, anywhere from eighth ounce all the way up to quarter ounce, just depending on where you're at. Three sixteenths is a great size to start with. Um, eighth, if you want them to look at it a little longer as it falls, and if you're really deep or fishing in current, a, a quarter ounce works, but three sixteenths is a really good all around size. Natural colors, just gonna fish it slow like you're fishing a jig or something like that. And it's just one of those things, it's over time it's gotten more and more popular. If you're a jig guy and you like throwing a jig, I would bet if you're in a clear water situation and you threw this, you'd get more bites than you did on your jig. And just, they just like it. It's finessey. It's subtle. And that's the profile that the fish just crush. So, um, Ned rig number three. And then lastly, it's my favorite. I saved it to the end. Drop shot rig. You can see I got one rigged up a little number one fusion 19 drop shot hook, three eighths ounce XPS tungsten weight and a fairly long leader. I go with a longer leader on uh, this drop shot for smallies than I do for largemouth, typically largemouth fish. And I've got like eight to 12 inches between my hook and my weight. On smallies, I go a little bit longer. And uh, the reason for that is a lot of times you're fishing in the clear water. These smallmouth are maybe not glued to the bottom and they can just see it better. They, it's up off the bottom a little more and it allows them more of an opportunity to see it. Again, half the battle with these smallmouth is getting them to see your bait. It's not so much getting them to bite, it's getting them to see your bait. Um, so longer leader. And then uh, as far as the worm, you only need one worm on smallmouth. It's a Berkeley flatworm. Everyone knows about this thing. They're almost impossible to find in the summertime. So um, before we get into like August, now's the time to buy them. 
Uh, we have two sizes, 3.6 inch and then 4.25 inch. The 3.6 is kind of what we've had forever. Uh, I've thrown it all over the country. It works. The four and a quarter is really cool for situations where maybe you're around some bigger fish or they're eating bigger bait fish. Um, and then color wise, it to me, color is not the most important thing on this. It's, it's profile and scent. So I like green pumpkin. I like black. I like, uh, we have a cool color called uh, green pumpkin watermelon laminate. Just another green works really good. And that's great if you're around perch, crawfish, gobies, stuff like that. Now, when you get around the true bait fish, like smelt, uh, stuff like that, it's cool. We got a, a smelt color right here. We also have a brown back. It looks a lot like a bait fish. Those are also really popular, really good colors too. But the drop shot, the thing about the drop shot for me is it's so precise. It's so lethal on those fish. They, they see it and they can't resist it. They never get sick of it. And, you know, I know when I go out with these four baits and I'm going out to a body of water that's maybe new, maybe I haven't been on it in a while, I can go out and focus solely on finding the fish rather than having to figure out you know, rifling through 20 different rods and techniques. Oh, I think they like this one a little better. I think they like that one a little bit better. I'm going to keep it very simple with my baits and use all of my mental energy and effort on actually finding where the fish live. And that's been a good recipe for me. I know they'll eat the drop shot. I know they'll eat the Ned rig. I know they'll eat a jerk bait. And if it gets really, really tough, I know I can catch them on a spy bait. So let's focus on what type of structure the fish are on, what type of depth, what the current's doing, just any of those factors, but I don't have to worry, do I have a bait tied on that's gonna catch fish? These four techniques and baits will catch them anywhere you go, any time of year when after the ice is out. There's tons of other little techniques that are good. Hair jigs are great. Certain crankbaits are great for smallmouth. Certain jigs, other types of plastics are good, but little swim baits are great. But these four right here will get you by if you're going to be taking a trip up north somewhere to go smallmouth fish in the summer and you're not super familiar with it, you could go with four rods with these baits tied on and I know you'll catch them. So um, hope you guys learned something there or, um, you know, enjoyed, enjoyed the video. Make sure to like and subscribe to the channel. I appreciate that big time. I got tons of other videos uh, coming out. We've got a couple really cool on the water videos that we're editing right now. So um, I, I think you guys will like those, but like, subscribe, share this channel with a buddy and uh, drop a comment below and we will see you guys next time.